the uh, the poor penalty corner conversion in the women's game is something that's becoming um, just more and more prevalent across this tournament. And, um, you know, to, to run off a couple of stats, Holland scored two of 15, and the two yeah. that they scored were actually lucky. One was a miss flick from Matler. The other, they uh, misdirected the injection and... Um, uh, Zandavard stood up and then they just played a seven on four and scored effectively a field goal. So uh, none of them really um, out of 15. GB scored one of nine. I think that was after scoring one of 11 in their first match. Yeah. India scored one of uh, seven and Germany none of seven. And, and in the other games, it wasn't like the other teams were, were, were good in terms of the conversion. So I think mm -hmm. I'd just be interested in other people's opinions, Todd and, and Mo, around that. Is it... Is it um, are the, is the PCD getting better or is the PCA not up to scratch at international level? You go, yeah. Uh, yeah, let me jump in here. I think I had a like, very brief chat Ernst, about this and, and I think Adam touched on it about the threat from the direct option. Um, and when you think of really dangerous flickers, your uh, powerman of the world, I'm not sure we have that level quality at the moment. So there seems to be quite a big reliance on variations. Uh, and I think it's making it easier for PCD to anticipate uh, the variations and not worry so much about the direct option. I think, Kim, one of the most alarming features which relates to it all with the direct shot is the defensive positions that players are getting into. Because this, they're basically, particularly the, the runner that's coming from the right post, if you stood there with, with the ball going, it looked like there was a deflection today that came off a, a player. I think it was in the, the Germany game. Well, it wasn't the Germany game. The point is that you've basically got second runners coming out, planting their stick pretty much on the spot. I mean, you would get, if a ball is, was properly travelling at top speed, that's a suicide position. That is absolutely yeah. crazy. Um, yeah. But the fact is the ball isn't travelling at that speed. So you've got this huge congestion going on looking for all the deflections, but that's because there isn't the number one threat that's going yeah. at, at proper speed. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I, I, do think that. I do think that PCD is improving and, and, I, and I think teams are getting better at having braver... Uh, first uh, runner running lines where they block out one side of the goal and if they do then the goalkeeper is responsible for looking after the other side of the goal. I think that is a factor but yeah, um, yeah we are lacking quality quality flickers. I mean I think Gorzolani scored a couple for, for Argentina today. I think one was a deflection. Van Massacre actually hit the crossbar. Uh, Ballston can flick. Uh, um, but, yeah, I mean, Ansley from, from the UK is not too bad. But, you know, we're really struggling there, aren't we, with, uh, with, with reeling off some players who are, who are world-class flickers. Yeah. Well, and oh, if absolutely. you look at the comparison, those players still need the ball to go into the perfect spot to score. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, in the, what we're seeing in the men's game is yeah. that uh, Hendrix, you know, yeah. I mean, it's... Wherever he puts the ball, it's travelling right. at that such a speed. And look, that's no. that's no criticism of the women's game. That's just to say that from a coaching perspective, it's the value of the ball going at a speed that requires such a fine level of adjustment for defenders. There isn't that at the moment. Defenders, yeah. are, it's just not happening quick enough and defenders are able to cover everything. Yeah, yeah, but like, okay, Berthe de Boer here is asking, uh, do teams, are, are they waiting for the final rounds or the do or die games maybe uh, to show some more variation in their PCs? Do you think that's a factor as well? Well, I, I was thinking about this and, and for me, that's, that's, a, that's a no. I, I, think, I think teams would like, you know, well, I'm putting my coach hat on here. I would like my team to be scoring goals in the round and not thinking, Okay, let's start to do it when we get into the knockout stages. So, um, yeah, I think yes, teams could be keeping some uh, things up their sleeve potentially, but in the men's game, for example, that's not happening because it's not like they'll get to the uh, the uh, knockout stages of the men's comp and all of a sudden start um, coming up with variations. They'll keep flicking. I mean, Belgium keep going to Hendricks. Um, mm -hmm. Australia generally keep going to Govers. 
So I don't think they're hiding anything. And in the women's game, they've got they've had that many opportunities to score. I think we've seen a lot of them. They're just not going in yet. So I yeah. doubt that they're keeping things up their sleeve. Yeah. Uh, and and Tim, I think the effect, particularly on the ladies' side, is if the conversion rate for corners is really low, you can almost against a really top side say, okay, we'll defend deep, we'll flood the twenty-five. We're happy to give off corners, yeah. all right, because you're more dangerous as, as an um, in open play. You know the Dutch girls on counter, but actually, if we take it to the corners, it's such a level at the moment, uh, and it's also part of the reason why New Zealand's been able to stay in games, mm. why uh, Argentina struggled to unlock. You know, and I, and I'm seeing that pattern where it's really hard to score field goals. Uh, and we're on the men's side, if you get up a corner, like South Africa did against Belgium, they put three away mm. and then the momentum changes and that's not quite happening to the same degree on the ladies' yeah. side. Yeah.